Now I have my bases. I am invincible. Oh, bollocks. <laughs>
and you can go down and it talks about how things are done and then right at the bottom you've got the main code so if you click here to expand the code you'll have a long list of the current code that you can upload into your Arduino but don't rush ahead and do that uh, otherwise it won't work you probably get just big blocks up on the bases that won't quite work right you need to either continue watching the video and see what the problems are with the, with the graphics library but basically you will have to download a slightly altered version of the Adafruit graphics library but anyway if you want to, to if you want to actually copy this code you would just go in here and it's one of these on here I think it's this one yeah so you click that and then as it says there just press ctrl c to copy it and you paste that straight into your Arduino environment uh, but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's have a look at what the problem is with the Adafruit code so we go down here to where the base is defined there we go so the base graphic is defined here and it's using a directive called progmem program memory which we've all used for that it was explained in an early episode extremely quickly to go over that again and um, it means we're going to store that graphic data and it's for a small system like this Arduino with limited memory resources that's quite a lot we're going to store that in program memory rather than the dynamic memory dynamic memory is the memory at runtime that we can change at 2k where we store our variables and things like that we can change that at runtime we can say variable a equals 10 then we can change it to a equals 12 or whatever um, but program memory isn't you program it on the upload and it's fixed you can't change that at runtime as your code's working and most of the time that's where we want our graphics to be because that's where we've got the most room, by 32k or so on, on this particular Arduino on the Nano. Um, but for the bases, we actually do need it to be destroyed. We need, as a bomb hits these pixels, and a one represents a pixel, and a zero represents, represents there's no pixel there. Um, we want various bits of destruction at the pixel level. And we can't alter that base graphic, we can't do that. So we have to use dynamic memory for this. So that means basically copying that out in the initialization for each new level that gets copied out into, and if we go down here, here it is, into this here. We've got an unsigned uh, char array called graphics for the base structure, and it's 16 bytes in depth, 16 bytes uh, in size. Because if you look, it's eight bytes deep and two bytes across, so we need 16 bytes. And in a bit of the code, uh, further down where we initialize the level, it copies that into there. So that will be in dynamic memory. That's what we're displaying on screen. And that's what we can destroy at the pixel level because we can alter that as we're going along. When I originally wrote this, and it's, it's some uh, months ago since this was actually finished, I've just been going through releasing bits at a time. Uh, I wasn't sure when doing it that way whether it, whether it would actually all kind of fit in in the memory, but it did. If you look there at the bottom, We've got used 82% of dynamic memory. Um, so we just about squeezed it in. So what is the problem? What, what's wrong with the Adafruit GFX mod library then? Because we actually have this. If we look at the library we include at the top, we have the screen and we have the graphics library there. And that's based on and only based on if you're doing bitmap graphics like we are, it will only work with progmem it expects that area of memory it's going to try and render and draw to screen to be in program memory so it didn't take a lot of changing uh, but I, I think I just slightly rewrote uh, one of the routines I'm not going to go into the details now but uh, I rewrote one of the routines so it would actually either work from progmem or dynamic memory as required so it works a display from each one and it was a it was a I don't know maybe an extra 50 bytes of, of code for that particular library. So no particularly big deal. So the first thing you need to do before you actually try and in, um, update your Arduino code with the new code, you need to change that graphics library to the one that I'm going to supply. So at the moment, I, I will fork it on GitHub at some point, but I haven't done it as yet. So the easiest thing is to go to the Arduino, uh, Arduino, no, sorry, the Extronical website. As I said, go to episode 10, read it as well if you wish to, or just scroll down to where we have the link to here it is my slightly altered version of Adafruit graphics library so you'll download that so that's downloaded and then you will open up and I'll just quickly shoot in to where that is stored so if you go into your documents for Windows it'll be something similar on other systems 
Um, but you need to go to where your Arduino folder is and on Windows it's usually in documents as long as you've not changed anything. Double click that and then there'll be a libraries folder. Where is it? There it is. Double click that and in there we've got the Adafruit GFX library master and we are going to override that. So if we go to um, So if we go back to where we downloaded it and we'll just click open. So we've got it there. That's uh, on Windows. That's actually the zip file. It's showing me the contents of the zip file. As I said, other systems, you may have to change it a little bit. Um, I've got my libraries there. So I'm just going to drag that into there. And for my system Windows, I'll say, do you want to update it? Do you want to merge it? You'll say yes. And I'll say, you want to replace some files and we'll say this for all the conflicts I'm just going to replace more with the new versions I've only altered this particular one so I'll copy and replace ignoring that one and that will then update or overwrite the existing um, GFX library code with my slightly altered one once you've done that you can actually go back to your well you could go down here, like I said earlier, and copy that code out into your Arduino environment, and you should be good to go. And that's roughly it. So I'm going to keep this episode pretty sh uh, shortish. It's been about 12 minutes long or so now. Um, I'm not going to go through some of the routines that have altered. Um, you can have a look if you want. They're basically under um, collision detection. So bomb collisions, base and bomb collisions. So bomb and base collisions here is where we're going to do some of the work of working out which pixels are in which bits of those bytes and deciding how far we're going to destroy down on a random sort of chance. You can see there, chance of bomb damage to the left or right. We should perhaps explain that one before we move on. So if we just scroll down, I'm just looking for that one, for that defined chance of, there we go. So these ones, chance of bomb damage to left or right. So as the bomb's dropping through, when it's hitting an actual bunker or base, um, there's a one in three chance of it actually doing any damage to the left or right as it goes down. And then there's also a one in three chance of the bomb penetrating down. So it'll hit, it'll draw the first pixel. And then if that says that's, I think it's a zero or a one or whatever its chance is, if that's true, it will penetrate down again and it will keep on penetrating down if that one in three chance turns up so you could have a bomb that will go right through on a very rare occasion so you can play with them numbers make it more or less likely to penetrate and do more damage to the base depending on how you want your game to play and that about wraps up this episode so like subscribe share and in the next episode i think we're going to be doing sound and that should be the last episode. I'm probably going to do one more after that. But basically, when we do the next episode, the game is complete with sound. And then I might just do one more episode on enhancing the sound, making it louder. Okay, but again, like I said, like, share and subscribe. And see you next time.